All right, so um, since we're going to be doing some stuff here, let me just show you real quick. Okay, we just uh, you type in uh, professional firmware and, and you know make sure you spell it correctly, unlike I did. Uh, um, it's on GitHub. Usually that's the one that you would look at. There are videos, lots of videos on this. Uh, this guy Brian, whatever, does a lot of videos on it. Kind of, some of them are quite helpful. Um, let's see here. Um, so let's just go right into here. Maybe if we click this to releases, maybe that will just take us to the page we're looking for without having to go through all the crap. Um, so this is technically really only for one Ender 3 printer, and that would be the Ender 3 V2, with or without BL Touch, <clears throat> okay? So, and this is what it's going to look like versus this. Um, well, actually, um, it won't look like this unless you've updated your screen, if I remember correctly. Um, so it's got lots of topics in here. How to install it, firmware features, getting started, saving the preferences, installing the BL3D CR Touch, uh, Octoprint, etc., etc. It's really cool stuff. Um, in order to use this firmware, you must meet the following criteria requirements. Compatible control board of a 4.2.2, 4.2.3, 4, 4.2.7, 4 uh, V2, 4S1, 301, or SKR Mini E3 V3 for Ender Series printers with a STM32 F103 or the F401 SOC. A DWN or DACAI or TJC or... Uh, Sinwit color display with encoder knob, touch, or legacy mono screens are not supported. You can modify your printer to meet these requirements, of course. A binary name nomenclature. Ender 3 V2 MM. If you have an Ender 3 V2 near stock, then use this version. MM is manual mesh. VLT is for touch. And then Ender 3 S1, use this version if you have an S1 with CR Touch. Okay, so there's some differences on that one, but anyway, uh, there's some other stuff here. UBL is unified, or, yeah, unified bed leveling, T13, temperature sensor, IS, input shaping, LA, linear advance, MPC, uh, model predictive temperature control, uh, CV laser module. Um, EZABL Pro from TH3D Studio. I actually had TH3D Studio software installed on my Ender 3 Pro and accidentally deleted it. And I don't know where Dave got it. I think it was automatically on the board that he put in there. So there's a, a information on the different screens. You can update your screen or you can leave it alone. I would suggest to just leave the screen alone for, for now, but um, you can also, I guess, compile your own thing. But um, what we have down here under the assets files is where you're going to find it. So 3S1, you got to know what all these abbreviations mean. So Ender 3V2, 422BLTUB MPC. Um, the MPC is kind of strange. Uh, I think they all say it. So the one that we're going to need here, since we have 4.2.2 and .2 manual mesh, is this one right here. Came out January 24th. If we keep scrolling through, you'd see it supports 4.27 also. And then you have the other ones. This, this is all. This is everything right here, people. So, uh, anniversary edition. Uh, this is not the latest version. To get the latest vision, go here. What is in this release? Okay. I don't know. Is this just like a, a log of everything? 
So the S1, I think, has a sprayed extruder. I think that's what the difference between that one is. Um, there's just lots of information here. I mean, we're almost at the bit, bottom of the page. So there's two pages of that. So let me show you what we'll need to do here. We will click on the MMMPC, okay? And it'll start downloading. And then we can open the file and then we'll just write it to our card, okay? All right, so once you've got it written to the thing, just go ahead and eject the mass storage device. And then we're ready to just go over to the printer. Okay, so here's our printer. We had clipper on it. We don't want clipper anymore. We want to put everything back to normal because we're going to get rid of this thing. And if I really wanted to, I could put the um, regular stock firmware on it from Creality. So it should have probably already booted by now. Okay, that's what it does. And then boom, it's done. So now you're going to need to calibrate some basic stuff to get everything going. But it's a lot easier than the Creality stuff. So, when this one here, um, you would have a bunch of stuff like bed tramming and stuff and whatnot. Um, and you kind of get it going. It, I'm not going to go through all that. I just wanted to show you guys what it takes to just put it on here. So now you just remove this card and you're good to go. It's done. It's flashed on there just like that. Some of the other functions that this has is when you scroll all the way through, it actually, see the rest of this? Okay, advance, and then you keep going. And then you get some other menus that show up down at the bottom. So, and this will give you a preview. So under the prepare menu, we have filament, move access, bed tramming, disable steppers, homing, Manual mesh, home offset Z, preheat PLA, preheat ABS, preheat PETG, which I'm going to select, preheat custom, cool down, and then we have the control menu. We have temperature, motion, store settings, and every time you store something or do something, you need to click that. Load settings, restore defaults. Reboot printer, info screen, a um, bunch of stuff. What does the info screen say? The info screen tells you this is the Morisco uh, version 2.1.3 professional firmware, official build, 2024-0125. So probably January 25th. And... So there's also underneath the temperature you can do um, uh, where is it at? There's a advanced okay um, MPC settings. So these are a good thing to do in most cases, uh, I guess. Um, so. You would just go here and click Auto Tune, MPC Auto Tune, and it's going to do a bunch of stuff. So this is probably the first thing that I would do is the MPC PID Tune for the hot end and then for the bed, and it will do this really cool thing. And you'll see this chart here, and the temperature will be wherever it's going to be. They go up and down. So what it's probably doing right now is it wants to drop the temperature, and then it's going to raise it back up. And so what it's trying to do is just kind of calibrate the temperature so that it can control it a little bit better it's really great software you don't get none of this crap really with the uh stock marlin that's on this but don't get me wrong it's still marlin but it's been modified so as you see it just keeps going down 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 and it'll go to a certain point because the bed is at 47 and the hot end is at 143 and dropping um so mpc auto tune 
should be doing probably the hot end and then the MPC PID tuning or whatever, auto PID tuning or whatever um, is going to be probably the bed. But there's two of them in this menu here, so it takes a little while. Alright, so the MPC target is 200 Celsius. So once it decides that it's went down all the way that it wants to go to, then it will start to climb. So when we get done with that, we'll print this Zygu X6100 part again using regular um, Marlin, no clipper. We'll see how it turns out. But we'll get back to the other thing here in a second. So once it gets to what it considers to be ambient temperature, Right, it starts to heat and it will cool to 200 and C and um, that will probably overshoot a little bit. So what it does is it tries to calculate what it needs to do to keep that temperature as regulated as possible. So right now we're seeing it come very close to its target very rapidly. It's at 162. So this takes quite a while, trust me. So now it's testing for heat loss. And then once it's done, use that, just click continue. And then so that's done. So now we need to go into the other one. We can find it. Okay. So I think it's under bed PID settings, PID auto tune, click that, and now it's going to do the same thing for the bed, which will also take quite a while. So since it was already cooled down, we don't have to sit around and wait for that part. So you see the little thing going across the graph in real time. and. I believe this one's like a lot quicker than the other. I'm not sure what its target temperature is. Now if you look down here, you see this is flashing. It's because it doesn't know its position. So it has to home and do all that other stuff. I have had issues where this thing uh, screwed up and it was unable to home and I actually had to just flash the software all over again and do all this stuff so just in case if you have that problem just go ahead and, and reflash the thing to the to the motherboard because I have never figured out a solution I don't know what the issue is um, and if you don't like this you can always just go get the Creality one and put it back on here but what's nice about this one I like is the bed tramming is a little bit easier not necessarily on this one on this one, you're definitely just going to want to manually do it. Um, I guess I should probably make a, another video on doing that. Alright, we're almost to 60 Celsius. 58. 59. 60. Now... What it will do next would be probably just try and maintain it, I guess. I'm not sure. PID cycles, 0 of 5. Okay. PID cycles, 1 of 5. And it did that pretty rapidly. So, I can hear the power supply going on and off with the fan. So, that might have something to do with it. Here's number 2. And each time it does that, it's uh, I think it's going on and off, on and off, on and off to maintain the temperature. We're at three. And then four will be shortly. There we go. So after this, I would imagine it's done if I can remember correctly. I've done this several times, usually I walk away from it. Okay, so then we click continue. So now we would need to go under the back key 
and we'll need to go here store our settings okay settings are stored all right what other advanced settings do we have here physical settings uh, media update LCD brightness uh, power outage that uh, is the one that leaves the funny little line in your stuff okay we don't want that on I didn't think about that um, the uh, Elegu Neptune 4 doesn't uh, seem to do that um, but these yeah they do okay so in the control menu we need to go to prepare now as best as I remember we got bed tramming and we need to home Z and we'll do this thing okay um, okay so let's see if I can get this to film correctly and I maybe can show you I've got a whole news piece of paper it's pretty beat up all right we're gonna need to go back out of this menu back we need to do a couple of things Preheat PETG, and we need to remove this filament. I know you guys can't see it, but I need to pull it out of there. So right now, we're 44, 47 out of 230, and we're going to remove the filament, and we're going to get the end of the nozzle clean as possible. Okay, so I'll be back when I'm done with that. So we got to auto home it. I've uh, pulled the filament out, and. We're gonna let it home itself. And once it does that, well then I can uh, come in here and I keep thinking the damn thing's touch screen when it's not. Uh, okay. So we need to Home the Z offset. Alright. We're gonna leave that one there. We got manual mesh. We can level the bed. And it will do its thing. So it's point one of twenty-five. And I'm not 100% sure how you're supposed to do this, but if you keep hitting this every time, it'll move, and you can kind of check this thing. Um, hmm. So continue the bed mesh, and click that goes point 25 and you can get your piece of paper out and see well we go. <laughs> it hung up on it but all we need is a small piece of paper and we can see we're fine I don't want to readjust this because I know it's already leveled so basically we we'll click this and it's going to do this 25 times, and you can check all 25 of them. And if you push it really fast, it will just skip through all of them. And I can look, I can see the gap is the same. So the only thing that needs to be done is my, is my Z offset. So you're actually probing the bed 25 times, it's just a pain in the butt. So. Now, if you had an automatic bed mesh, it would show this. So, for whatever reason, it, it kind of brings up a mesh that it has no idea, really, because there's no probe. We'll, we'll click save. So, let's go back. And under bed tramming, it'll do, I think, a four or five point adjustment 
So, Palm Z and disable. Okay. There we go. It actually looks pretty close. Okay. So you can adjust these um, wheels. Mine have already been adjusted. Okay. So now the only thing I need to do is just get my Z offset perfect. Okay. Now to adjust the Z, you can adjust it while you're printing. Hold on. Oh my god, this thing's driving me nuts. So the Z can be adjusted while while you're printing. But So there is an adjustment here. It shows me what the offset is. And I can see what it is. If I go, it's 45. So if I go 80, now it's really loose, okay? If I go 43, it's pretty tight. So you should be able to put the paper, and you should be able to pull it, but you shouldn't be able to push it. So we click that, and then we go back. We come into here, the control menu, and store settings. Okay. Now, you should be able to come up here to media and go click our file. It shows us our file, and we should be able to print it. Of course, now we need to get our filament back in here. All right. So we gotta get this piece cut here. Seem to be having something stuck in this thing. Um, let me come in here and cancel this print, and then we need to go here to prepare. Let me preheat PTG. Um, sometimes you get a piece in here, and it will plug it up. So you can come into here and you just click Move Extruder, and a little bit coming out of the bottom. I prefer to push the thing. I'm trying to make sure something's not wrong here. Because the thing is misbehaving. So what I like to do is grab it from the top here. Push this down, and then you can see I just extruded a bunch out. So that's good. So now let's come in here. We're gonna go back here, back, print, print. So it's ready to go. Now, assuming that we have our Z access correct, we should be good. If we don't, there is a way to adjust it in here where it says tune okay so once we're in this menu here we can adjust our speed our temperature our bed temperature our fan speed and then the offset so basically this one is a lot easier to use than the factory software
And I love how it always prints a line here so you can kind of tell, okay, is this going to work? Sure should. Might be a little bit close. We're gonna come down here and we go into our Z offset. I'm gonna bring it up to 46. I don't want it that tight. Yeah, too tight. There you go, 49. So it's leaving some boogers on here. We might have some stuff to work on. Might be a little too hot. Let's go bed temperature, hot end temperature. We're going to go 230. I might even go 225. If I remember correctly, this stuff, I think, I don't think it's real PETG. I think it's been adulterated with PLA or something, recycled filament. It doesn't act normal. So, this is not really a good print, but like it's an idea, you know, you're getting it started. You can come in here and adjust and, you know, figure out. Usually, what I would do if I didn't have something on there, I'd print the squares. A bed calibration set of squares. But you see we were leaving stuff behind here. See, that's stringing. So, I typically, if I'm concerned, I'll come in here with this and try and remove these. But that's what happens sometimes. So then we'll go here. We go stop. Confirm. And we'll just do it all over again until we get it right. Because if you get the first layer wrong, obviously, as you guys know, you know you're know you going to have a bad print. Okay. And then I go in here and I quickly set it back. I'm going to do PLA just because I want the temperature lower. Now, I need to get this stuff off of the bed, but what happens is when you cancel the print, it locks the steppers. So really, if you want to move this, you can't. And then you got to go in here to prepare and disable the steppers. Now you can do that. I may need to put um, some more hairspray down on this, but should be good. Okay, so we'll go back here. We'll try and print our file again. We'll go put this in the garbage while you guys watch and see and let me know if it works. Okay, we're at 195 and 70. So as soon as it says, okay, I'm at the right temperature, it's going to attempt to print, and it's going to suddenly raise the temperature to 245 because that's what's on the G-code file. Now we'll go in here into tune. We're going to adjust the hot end temperature to 225. Okay. Now it's going to sit here and go up to the 225. So the bed temperature is fine. If something goes wrong, we can reduce the speed. If we need to reduce the Z offset, we can do that also. So sometimes I like to print a very large brim or a skirt around it. That way I can get an idea more than just that as far as like if it's going to print correctly. There's a lot of squish here. And see this is not sticking to the bed. So we don't have enough squish. So literally we take advantage of this situation and we adjust it. Now 
Now because that outer layer is actually the skirt, we should be able to get away with this. But no, see, look, it's just not sticking. So what we need to do is probably reapply. This is why I don't really care for pr printing on glass, but we'll check a, a little while and just see if the rest of it's sticking or if it looks like, you know, it's not really sticking. So we can try 40 millimeter and see if that sticks. I want to clear all this out of here so I can kind of watch it. I got so much crap here, I really can't see what the hell's going on. So, it still looks like it's up a little bit high. Let's get this out of here. Another thing you can do, too, you pause the print, and it will move out of the way. Okay, and this is what I should have done. Because while you're doing that, you can clear the build plate. And it's going to sit and beep at you, but that's okay. Okay. So one thing I can do, too, is I can get uh, a wipe and wipe it because it's got hairspray on it. And it's it's warm, but Now, if that doesn't work, you can use rubbing alcohol to loosen up the hairspray. But basically, I just want to spread it around. And any oil that might have been on my hands could have been an issue too. And that might help with it, but probably not. Okay. So... It wants to offer to do a print purge, but we don't need to do that. Okay. And then it will attempt to resume, and hopefully it's still on the first layer, because if it's not, it's not going to do anything. Now, I feel like this thing is under extruding, because it's not moving real fast. Let's just see if any of this sticks. If it doesn't, we'll have to give it a quick spray. So we do seem to have an adhesion issue. We'll go ahead and stop it. Alright, so this is it for me. I've got a few more things I need to do. Um, but you get the idea. So um, I'm going to have to fix a few more things. Temperature's not quite right, etc., etc. So anyway, we'll catch you guys later. Thanks for watching.